What is up, everybody? DC live chat. Wednesday, April 3rd. Let's let this place fill up a little bit. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Some comments in here. Everybody hear me. Sometimes the audio doesn't work on these things. Ten four. Jasmine. What's up, Jasmine? What is up, everybody? Welcome in to the DC live chat. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, and there is a lot to get to in the world of boxing. We're still coming off of a wild weekend that saw title fights all over the continents in Japan, uh, in Southern California, in Arizona, in Las Vegas. And Las Vegas is where I was watching Tim Zhu get cut open over his head and Sebastian Fondora upsetting the apple cart, turning the 154-pound division on its head. He wins a, a, a decision, and so much fallout has happened since then in terms of will there be a rematch? Will Errol Spence somehow weasel his way uh, into this fight? What does it all mean? And other than that, uh, Pitbull Cruz knocks out Roley Romero in the co-main event, which could easily have been the main event. Crowd was going wild there. Now Pitbull becomes a guy at 140 pounds, and that really is what I want to talk about on today's show is um, the future of 140 pounds, the state of 140 pounds. It's the deepest division in boxing. If you just look at all the champions that are in it, Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, Pitbull Cruz, Subriel Matias, and you have a lot of supporting characters at 140. Uh, it's the best division in boxing, and that's where I want to uh, spend a lot of time uh, today. But I also want to take – all of your questions, take all of your, your your thoughts. That's what these live chats are about. Of course, they're brought to you by PPV.com. PPV.com is your home for live pay-per-view events. Uh, the next one is Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, which we will get on April 20th. And the thing about PPV.com that I love the most is that it's no subscriptions. Everything is subscriptions these days, not PPV.com. You sign up, um, you log in. You order the pay-per-view, and in addition to that, you get to join the live chat with me, Jim Lampley, Chris Algieri, Lance Pugmire. We were in there last weekend uh, for Zoo Fundora, and it was a great, great time uh, talking boxing while we were watching those fights unfold. So PPV.com is your destination, is the only place to order pay-per-views, and there are some fun ones coming up between Haney and Garcia, Canelo, and Munguia, and it looks like Tank will now be fighting June 22nd. Uh, it was rumored to be June 15th, but June 22nd in, in Texas, in Houston. Uh, don't these guys have day jobs? Well, buddy, this is my job. <laughs> uh, this is what I get paid to do, live chats. If you're at work, uh, here is your chance to watch and talk some boxing. So thank you for that. Uh, Randy Velasquez says, sadly, they are not going to fight each other. We might get one matchup between them. And that, yeah, that's kind of how boxing fans are kind of program to think these days is like yeah there are four great fighters at 140 right now that all have belts and they're never gonna fight they're never gonna fight that's how fans are, are programmed uh to, to watch boxing and think about boxing is we're never gonna get these fights well tank davis eventually has to fight someone uh worth of a note like frank martin is a good fight but I, the the public isn't like demanding Javante Davis fight Frank uh, Martin. The public is demanding that Javante Davis fight Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, or Tiafimo Lopez. I think with Pitbull winning, I think Javante will fight Pitbull next um, at the end of the year at 140, win a title there, and then he will look at some of the, the other champions at 140. That's just my thoughts. I, I understand. I'm optimistic, Dan, and it might not happen like that. But I think that the way that they've been moving Javante Davis is to – Get to this point in his career where he's 28, 29. He's the A side in all these negotiations. He's the bona fide star. So now go out and, and make the legacy fights. Make the legacy fights. My pet flamingo. Love the new direction. Always been a fan from the UK. What's your latest take on what AJ does next? AJ. Hmm. I don't know. Hergovic's fighting Dubois, right? So I thought AJ would fight Hergovic. And Zhang is fighting Wilder. I thought maybe AJ would fight Wilder. 
I think AJ maybe takes some time off, even though I don't think that's a good idea. The Usyk Fury uh, fight could be two fights. Uh, the thing with with Turkey Ashalik, His Excellency, is he's been ripping up these rematch clauses. You know that he ripped up the Parker Zhang rematch clause. So maybe he rips up the Fury Usyk rematch clause, and Joshua fights the winner of Fury Usyk uh, at the end of the year. And Joshua then fights like a maybe you know a stay busy type of fight between now and then. Got the green screen now. I see you. DC. That's not a green screen. <laughs> that that's uh, I got I got these like crazy YouTube lights. My guy Wade Plem, who I call the fights with for MVP. Uh, there's another one coming up April 26th on the zone. I'll be on the call. Uh, he hooked me up with some of these lights. They're like floodlights. They're crazy. They're supposed to light up like sides of homes. Like I can change it on my phone. I can shut it off. It's not, a, it's not a green screen, but uh, I had to do something here. I'm still tinkering with the home setup. So part of this new deal, PBV.com, is that I work from home, and I do these shows from home. Uh, I no longer work at John Boy Media, even though I still support them. Uh, they had studios, and um, it's hard doing it at home. you got to come up with a good setting. you got to come up with good cameras and all that stuff. I'm not really good with technology. Like I'm lucky to even get this off the ground. I right, roll over the place with the messages. Uh, let's, Randy makes sense world title, and he's been at 140. You're talking about Tank, yeah. I think Tank at 140, like I know he's not big, but like he's fought at 140. He beat Mario Barrios. Mario Barrios, like you say, what you want about him is a B B B type of fighter, and Tank handled him. Like Tank can fight at 140. If I mean, there's not many fights left for him at 135. All the all the big fights for him are, are at 140. Not that he he cares. Um, Juan Gallegos, what's up, buddy? Rank the next three PPV from excited to buy, might buy, won't buy. Uh, I never really told people what to do when it comes to buying pay-per-views. If you feel like you want to throw down and want to watch the fights with your friends and join us in the chat at PPV.com, uh, then do so. But I'm really excited about Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Uh, I'm really excited about Canelo Munguia. And I'm very excited about Tank Davis. I mean, those are the upcoming ones. Uh, Fury Usyk, too, May 18th. I probably put that in there, too. You can watch all those fights on PPV.com. Tank doesn't want to fight Pitbull. Why? Why? What makes you say that? What makes you say that? He beat him once already. Handled him. So I don't believe this whole thing where Tank doesn't want to fight this guy. He's scared of that guy. I would favor Tank over all those guys. It's just that it's a business. It's a business before it's it's a business before it's a sport. I think we we learned that with Errol Spence getting in the ring after the fight against Tim Zoo. I love the question so far. Everyone's doing a wonderful job here. Uh, Sligo, 405, do you know if Andy Ruiz is any kind of shape? Will we ever get another important fight? I don't know, man. I've completely given up on Andy Ruiz. Listen, if Andy Ruiz has given up on us and has given up on fight fans and has given up on making big fights, why should we care about Andy Ruiz? He priced himself out of the Wilder fight. He priced himself out of so many big fights. And now Saudi Arabia is putting on these heavyweight showdowns, and he's not a part of it because he's probably difficult to work with. There's zero interest in his career anymore, and he has no one else to blame but himself. I I don't care if I ever see Andy Ruiz in a ring again. I know it's harsh, but it, it's it's true. White, perhaps, for AJ. Makes sense as he needs beef that sells to stay active. Uh, I don't know. Dillian White, AJ, does nothing for me. Nothing. Um, there's not many. Joshua Parker? Joshua Parker do something for you? I don't know. I think I think I'd rather watch Joshua Parker, Hergovic Dubois, Zhang Wilder, Fury Usyk. Heavyweight division is like kind of heating up. Like we haven't really put too much thought in it. Maybe me and Chris will have to go in depth on that. Simpre Reyes, my guy. What fight at 140 do you want to see first to be unification? Probably Haney Tiafimo. I've been waiting for Haney T. Fimo for a long time. That, to me, is like, I don't know if it will be a really fun fight, to be honest, <laughs> considering how uh, T. Fimo can only look good against guys that come forward and Devin Haney does not come forward. So I don't know if Haney T. Fimo will be a barn burner, but it's something that we need to see because they have been all stars and we just need to see it. Like Matias versus T. Fimo. Now we're cooking. Tias, Matias versus Tia Fimo, stylistically, is probably the best fight of, of all those. Or Pitbull versus Haney. Or Pit, like Pitbull comes forward. Matias comes forward. Haney is a, a counterpuncher. Tia Fimo is a counterpuncher. So let's put the pressure fighters versus the counterpunchers. 
those would make for the most fun fights. In terms of the most the fights that make the most commercial sense, obviously it's Tia Fimo versus um Devin Haney. Barroso gotta get his shot. My man Barroso. Did you guys catch that video I did with Devin Haney blind ranking the 140 pound champs or the 140 pound fighters? You gotta go check that out on our TikTok and, and instant boxing live um Instagram. So funny. Uh Barroso's the guy. Everyone loves Barroso. Ruiz didn't even care about his rematch with AJ. Bro, that's when I lost all respect for, for Andy Ruiz. This guy had everything going for him after he beat AJ. Everything. He was the, the story in boxing. He crossed over into like regular sporting coverage and, and non-sporting coverage when he beat Joshua, first Mexican-American champion, fat guy who eats Snickers. It was awesome. And then he comes in for like fucking 100 pounds overweight. Like That guy is not to be taken serious, Andy Ruiz. What do you think is next for Shakur after his next fight in Jersey? Does he re-sign with top rank? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Shakur obviously has Terrence Crawford in his corner. He's got Andre Ward in his corner. Terrence Crawford famously left top rank to make the biggest fight of his career. Andre Ward was part of so many legal promotional negotiations and promotional beefs. So he's going to get some really good counseling from those two. You know, uh, Crawford is probably telling him to leave top rank. If he leaves top rank, there's some big fights for him at 135 out there. Javante Davis fight becomes a lot easier if he leaves top rank. If he goes to match room, then, you know, things get a little more difficult. Maybe a, a fight with Haney at 140 if he leaves if he leaves top rank and goes to match room. I don't know what Shakur is. Shakur is, is at a career crossroads. It's crazy to say that um, when he's so young. But not only does he have to win and win impressively on July 6th against Artem Hartowinian, who almost beat Frank Martin, but he's got to like rebuild his image. He's got to make some career choices. He's got to entertain. It's the sport that where you have to entertain. And Shakur Stevenson is not entertaining as of late. I still think he's so damn talented, and I would I would pick him against a lot of the top guys today. But if he wants to reach maximum dollars, if he wants to be a pay-per-view draw, then, you know, he has to fight different, number one. And also, like, leaving top rank means you're, you're going to go out and be a pay-per-view draw. Like, top rank predominantly stages their fights on regular ESPN. So if he leaves top rank and he goes to the PBC, you know, PBC for predominantly puts their fights on pay-per-view. Um, that's something that you have to consider if you're Shakur Stevenson. Are you a pay-per-view fighter right now? I, I don't think he is. Um, but some of the bigger matchups for him are probably with PBC and or, or with Matchroom. And he will he be the A side in those because he has a little bit of an ego. Um, we'll see. I'm very curious. I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about Shakur leaving top rank. I haven't heard where he's leaning, but I definitely think he's going to listen to all the offers out there. And I do think that he is he has value. Do you think a Canelo versus Benavidez would be a repeat of Canelo Bivol? In which Canelo looks small. Don't know why people want an uneven fight. Um, Bivol and Benavidez fight differently. Uh, Benavidez uh, doesn't have as good of a jab as Bivol. Doesn't have as good as footwork as Bivol. He's a, Benavidez is a plotter. He's big. He throws a lot of punches. Bivol throws a decent amount of punches. Benavidez and Be Bivol fight completely different. But one thing that they're going to do is make Canelo look small. Benavidez is a lot easier to hit than Bivol. Bivol is a really tough, tough fight for anyone. He has an unbelievable jab. He has unbelievable footwork, and he can't be hit. And he has just enough power and just enough precision to take your timing away. Bivol is, like, Bivol is just all wrong for Canelo. Benavidez, I think, is an easier fight for Canelo. It's not, I don't, I'm not going to say he's going to win, but I think Bivol is just such a different type of fighter than Benavidez. Benavidez is, well, is more likely to brawl with Canelo, and Machismo comes in. Garcia is plus 500 versus Haney. That seems about right. The boy needs better management and needs to dedicate. Haney's a true pro in the room, and the number is right. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, here's the thing about Haney. Haney says, does an interview at Fight Hub and, yesterday and says the fight is a mismatch. I hate that type of talk. Yes, it probably is, but how are you selling a pay-per-view by saying that it's a mismatch? Why are people going to order this if, you're gonna say, if your first thing you say is that this fight is a mismatch? 
I know that that there's video of Floyd Mayweather doing the same thing to 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 Gotti, and all these fighters look up to Floyd. I mean, Haney talks just like Floyd Mayweather; has the same mannerisms, all that. When I was hanging out with him, but the thing what Floyd did later on in his career is he hyped up his opponents. Did it to McGregor. It helps sell the fight. Haney needs to say, yeah, uh, I think I'm better than Ryan Garcia, but damn, he's got a great left hook. Damn, he's quick. Damn, he could catch me. Damn, I was rocked by Jorge Linares. You tell me I can't get rocked by Ryan Garcia? Sell the fight. Stop diminishing it. Freaking annoying. Love the questions, guys. You guys are awesome here on a Wednesday afternoon, a rainy Wednesday afternoon. We're getting some crazy rain here in New York City, high winds. Uh, my Yankees are on at 3.30. Can't wait for that. They're playing in Arizona, so there's not going to be any rain delays there. Um, yeah, I'm having a great afternoon, you guys. Uh, can't wait for 175 of Benavides in the mix. Yeah, that's interesting. If I, I'm interested because um, – so Tank Davis, uh, June 22nd, is going to be a PBC on Prime pay-per-view, and the rumor is that Benavides is going to fight at 175 uh, on the co-main against uh, um, Vodzik. So I'm curious to see if Benavides goes to 175. Does he ever come back down to 168? Like, I'm not convinced that Benavides comes back down to 168 if he fights at 175 this June. Unless it's for it's for Canelo, obviously. Because there are some big fights for him at 175. Saudi Arabia wants to put him in there. Better be ever be vol. There's some names at 175 all across the board. You know, there's names from 168 too, but... I don't know how much longer he can he can he wants to make the weight. I think he can. I don't know much how much longer he wants to. Uh, who's the next heavyweight U.S. breakout star after Wilder? I would thought it was Jared Anderson, and I still think skill wise it's Jared Anderson. But damn, that guy keeps getting into trouble. Driving 130 miles, I mean 130 miles per hour for six miles, leading the cops on a wild chase, and then not being really apologetic afterwards. You know, saying like I'll probably. I'll probably get in trouble again. Um, if he can figure out his his stuff, Jared Anderson is is the next heavyweight. I haven't really done a lot of research on who's next behind him. Um, but it's Jared Anderson in a, by a long slide. Dan, you're the man. Your content is top notch. Thank you, Sean Singletary. I needed to hear that today. Appreciate it. Um, I, I see you in the chats. I see you in the comment section. Um, you've been a, a, a big time supporter of the show and I really appreciate you. So thank you. Any of the young ones, legit contenders within 24 months. I don't know what you're talking about. Pet Flamingo. You gotta be a little more, uh, real, um, specific. Sorry. Uh, Shakur has to follow the Haney route. Haney was considered boring for a while. Yeah. And then Haney kind of changed that by undressing, uh, Regis Progre by undressing George Cambosos by going life and death with Lomachenko, but standing and trading. Think about Haney. Yeah, he's a defensive first fighter, and he has a jab. He fights behind a jab, but he'll take chances, Devin Haney. He'll stand in the pocket and trade, throw body shots. Shakur has not shown that. Shakur can still stick to his roots, which is unbelievable defense, but you got to pick and choose times to stand and trade and, and get hit a few times, or you're just not going to sell. Shakur can do what he does – what he's been doing for the next 10 years. He can win unanimous decisions for the next 10 years, but will he have a fan base? Will he get top dollar? Will he make all the money that he dreams about? Probably not. So you got to make some, some changes. You got to make some adjustments. And he says that he's going to go all in. He says he's going to turn it all the way up July 6th. We'll see. Kind of off topic, but is boxing pretty much dead in the Midwest? I live near Chicago, and it seems like all the events are out west, southwest. It even seems like fewer in New York. Yeah, man. Um, Saudi Arabia, that's where all the big fights are going. And then Vegas. There's not many fights in California. There's not many fights in New York. Man, there used to be fights at Barclays Center once a month, once every other month when PBC was going there. That's why I was shocked when Haney and Garcia got announced for New York. But that was just because... Uh, Vegas was unavailable and California was unavailable. Midwest has never really been a hot spot for like big fights. Like I never, uh, didn't Usyk fight in Chicago a couple of years ago? But you know, it's a shame because Midwest is a great is a great fan base, uh, great people. I was I've called some fights in Ohio. Uh, I love it there. Um, they're hard nosed people and they like their boxing. 
But the thing with Chicago is like, at least you can get out to Vegas pretty quickly on a short flight. Um, but yeah, I feel like it, the big fights are either in, in Vegas these days or in Saudi Arabia. Bivo is one of the best at controlling distance. That's what gave Canelo the most trouble. Yes, Scuba Steve. Um, not saying that Benavidez can't do that, but ben, Bivol was much is much better at controlling distance than than anyone, especially um, when it comes to fighting Canelo. Like Benavidez is a different type of fighter than than Bivol. Benavidez will apply pressure, but he's a plotter. He'll, he'll walk forward. He'll he'll he's got good defense, Benavidez, but it's not Bivol's level. I, I think. Canelo versus Benavides is, a, is an easier fight than Canelo versus Bivol 2 or even better BF. What's up, Dan? Los? My guy. What's up, Los? Shazora claims that Anthony Joshua's next fight will be the winner of Dubois Hergovic instead of the winner of Fury Usyk. If that happens, if so, why would AJ not fight Usyk Fury? He might not fight Usyk Fury if Usyk Fury have a rematch clause. So if they fight in May, May 18th, Fury and Usyk. Then they fight again in December. What's Joshua going to do? He's going to have to fight someone. So maybe he'll fight Dubois Hergovic in December because they're fighting June 1st, Dubois and Hergovic. Maybe that's the case. I, I, I don't see Joshua not going after Usyk Fury winner at all, especially at this point in his career. Joshua has a couple of fights left, I think. I think three or four fights. He has nothing really else left to prove. Um and Fury's and, and Joshua have to fight. I think Fury and Wilder still have to fight each other, especially if Wilder can get past Zhang. And then Fury, I mean, uh, Joshua, excuse me, I need to start over. Joshua needs to fight Fury still. Joshua needs to fight Wilder still. Joshua probably wants another crack at Usyk. And Joshua probably wants to fight Hergovic because there could be a belt on top of that. And he can be four-time world champion or three-time world champion. Estrada versus Bam. Oh, my goodness gracious. I can't wait for Estrada versus Bam. Uh, I'm going Bam. Yeah, all day. I would pick Bam against pretty much anyone right now at those weights. Sharper, uh, younger, fresher. Estrada is really good, but he's he's just been out of the ring for so long, and he's he's up there in age. He's got a lot of mileage on him. I can't wait for that. Was that June 29th? Uh, that's going to be awesome. His upcoming boxing schedule is freaking loaded, man. Like, we're about to enter a crazy stretch starting on uh, April 20th with Haney and Garcia, um, which you can order on pbv.com. Go ahead and do so. That's right in the description. Um, yeah, after that, it goes every weekend after April 20th. I'm on the road three weeks straight. Orlando for DAZN, uh, Canelo Munguia, uh, Lomachenko Cambosos, uh, Fury Usyk. Go up and down. May, June is freaking loaded, man. Joshua Edwards, American heavyweight that will win gold in Paris this year. Okay. Okay. I'll take a look at him. I'll look him up. I'll check him out. I'm looking forward to the uh, Paris Olympics. We get some boxing in there. Can we get some stars? Can we make some stars at the Olympics? I know, um, Jake Paul has been working with the USA boxing team, trying to up their profile. He's hanging out in Colorado Springs. What else we got here? Should Shakur go the Haney route? Really, or just stick to his style and do his thing? I don't know, man. See, here's the thing. When I talk to on our on our podcast, Inside Boxing Live, we'll have another episode out Friday. We're going to talk about this topic. Um, we've talked about Shakur, and we've talked about what he said. In the next fight, Shakur says he's going to turn it all the way up in terms of offense. Chris Algieri is not buying that. He's a fighter, Chris Algieri. He, he, he understands. Like, you can say you're going to fight a certain way, then you get in the ring, and then you completely revert back to your instincts. Shakur Stevenson's instincts are to fight like he's been fighting his whole career, defensively, move around in there, don't take chances. Those are his instincts. He's been doing that his whole life. It's a really hard thing to change, especially at this point in his career. So I'm a little skeptical if he's going to all of a sudden turn into an offensive fighter. I'm a little skeptical to see if Shakur is going to stand in the center of the ring, take shots, and give shots. So, you know, I don't know the answer to that. Well, that's what we'll have to see on July 6th. We'll have to see if he's willing, you know, to do that. Like, I'm interested just as much as you are. Does Crawford fight at 147 again? No, I think Crawford's done at 147. He doesn't want to fight boots. The only fight for him is to fight boots. He became undisputed at 147 by beating Spence. Spence is at 154. Crawford's at 154. I don't know who Crawford fights. He, once again, not being aligned with the PBC is hurting Crawford. 
Um, if he was aligned with the PBC, they probably would have made Fundora versus Crawford. It would have been an easier fight to make within the WBO. With the WBO ordering Fundora versus Crawford, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, PBC is going to say, no, Sebastian, like you can fight Errol Spence and you can make a lot of money, give up that belt and then fight Spence and see what happens after that. They, Errol Spence leaped frogged Terrence Crawford in this because Spence is aligned with the PBC and Crawford isn't. That's just the way it is. Why does everyone causes Canelo of ducking Benavidez with his record? And no one accuses the Mexican monster of ducking Morel. Well, dude, like Canelo is held to a different standard than David Benavidez. Canelo is the face of boxing. He is the king. So when you're the king, you have people coming at you at all times. Um, you have people expecting you to take on all comers. And Canelo has taken on all comers, but he's done it at his own pace. He did fight Golovkin twice. Waited for Golovkin to get a little bit older and took him on. He did fight Cotto. Cotto was at the end of his career. He fought Lara and Trout while they were in their prime, and many think that he lost to Lara. I think he beat Lara. He fought Floyd Mayweather. He fought a lot of these guys at 168. He fought Caleb Plant somewhat in his prime and dominated him. He fought Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs was somewhat in his prime. But these are not fights that everyone was clamoring for. Everyone was clamoring for him to fight Golovkin. And now everyone's clamoring for him to fight Benavides. You can't you can't hold Canelo to the same standards as B David Benavides. They're not the same. Canelo's the face of boxing. He's a superstar. High expectations when you're the face. Who do you favor in the Fury Usyk fight? Oh man, I've been going back and forth. Ah, I've been going back and forth after watching Fury against Ngannou. Obviously, that changed my thoughts, and it changed the the um, Sports books. For the first time, I don't know if this is still the case. Uh, Usyk is now the favorite against Fury, slightly. I'm still leaning Fury. I like the way he looks. I like that he's really in shape. I think he got embarrassed uh, by Ngannou. Uh, I think he's a little more focused. He was not focused against Ngannou. He's just too big. Like I think it's going to get a lot closer. I don't think it's going to be some blowout. I think it's going to be pretty close. I think Fury is getting older. His reflexes aren't the same. He's not fainting as much. Uh, he's not throwing as many punches. Father time is taking a toll on Fury, just like it would take a toll on anyone. I'm still leaning Fury. It's getting closer, though, and I can't wait. I need to see that fight. Do you think Loma is going to chase Undisputed again and try to unify all the belts, especially if he had to go through Shakur to do it? Yes. Um, I've been wondering what Lomachenko's motivations are. In this point of his career, he's 35 years old. He's an old 35, right? 300 amateur fights. He's accomplished so much in his career. But the one thing that he has said, his main goal in boxing was to become undisputed. And he wanted to do it at 135. He came this close when he lost that decision to Haney. Now, 135 is, is it's tough. you got to start over now. He's got to beat Cambosos for IBF. Then he's got to beat Shakur and hope Shakur stays there. Coming undisputed is more about like getting lucky with promotions and getting lucky with the boxing landscape more than it is about being the best at a division. Like Shakur could leave top rank and leave 135. Um, do we think a fight between Javante Davis and Lomachenko is going to happen anytime soon? So I, I think that Loma wants to become undisputed. I just don't think that he has enough time and I just don't think the boxing landscape will allow him to achieve that. Any news about 160? Oh my God, 160. Bro, what is happening with middleweight? What is happening with 147? And what is happening with middleweight? I haven't heard anything about 160. Janabek, guy's got zero profile. That's nothing. I saw Chris Eubank was in the gym at Top Rank um, this past weekend when I was there talking to Haney. And I think maybe he'll fight at 160, but he's talking about 168. Like, I don't know, man. One one middleweight to Joe, Carl Sadamas. Another guy who hasn't fought in, like, forever. Technically one of the champs there. Janabek, Elijah Garcia, who I thought could could rise the ranks, didn't got pulled out of his fight last weekend. That's not great. 160 is in such, such bad, bad shape right now. Whatever happened to Brian Castaño? He hasn't fought since the Charlo fight years ago. I have no idea what happened to Brian Castaño, man. 
Brian Castagna was like one of my favorite fighters to watch. That guy was like entertainment. That guy was punches and bunches. A lot of these PBC guys have, have you know, their careers have come to a halt because there's just not enough dates. Um, you know, this whole Amazon deal took a while to, to come through and their, their first event was just this last month. So they have a massive, massive um, roster, Castagno, but I'm sure he's no longer affiliated with PBC. He's probably a, a free agent at this point. I haven't heard a damn thing about Castagno, but I, I would like to watch him fight. Ubank is too big for 160. Yeah, I agree. I, when I saw him at the top rank gym, he was looking big. That's a big boy, Chris Eubank. He won't fight at 160. There's no fights. There's nothing. The thing about 160 is like there's nothing there. Like there's no money fights. Fighters need to go where the money's at. It's just like any other profession. Like we need to go where the money's at in, in any job in life. And if you're a fighter uh, around 160-ish, why would you stick at 160? Yeah, you can win all the belts, but like you're not going to get any any big purses, you know, fighting Janabek or Carlos Adamas. It just is what it is. There's no... There's no cash cow at 160, so therefore it's a dead division. Old man Dan in the house. Here I am. What's up, Hernis? What about cruiserweight? We pretty much never hear about this division or any potential unifications. Jai Opatai is looking great. Zerto could be. Yeah. I mean, cruiserweight has never been a, a big division. Like, that's another. It's like a It's a stepping stone. Like, there's you're either fight at light heavyweight or you fight at heavyweight. There's never been any big money at Cruiserweight. Jay Opatai, I think, is one of the best fighters in the world. He could fight Zerto. That's a fun one. You know, he's Jay Opatai is fighting Maris Breedis on the undercard of co-main event of Fury Usyk. It's a rematch. Um, I expect Opatai to win again. And then I expect Zerto to fight Opatai because there's not many fights at Cruiserweight. And if Opatai doesn't fight Zerto, Opatai will go up to heavyweight. He's talked about going up to heavyweight. Um... Zerto can go to heavyweight. You follow the money, just like I just said. Follow the money. You you, you leave divisions. You you go into divisions for opportunities. This is prize fighting. This is about making money, just like anything else in life. Do you think there's any chance Loma in a way? For what Loma in a way? Come on, man. What <laughs> Loma's is like 135 pounds. In a way, 126, 122. No, never. Those days are over. Um, I want Loma versus Tank. Yeah. I would like Tank might take that fight. Like, I still have higher hopes for for Javante Davis. I still think he'll fight Shakur or Haney or Tiafimo. But if Loma wins a bell and beats Cambosos, Tank that's another option for Tank. Pitbull at one forty, Lomachenko one thirty five. I don't know. Tank. It depends on how Lomachenko looks. I expect him to look pretty good against Cambosos. I think Cambosos is done. Um, Tank Lomba would have been a great fight. Like. Four years ago? I mean, I'll still watch. I mean, of course we're going to watch. We watch everything. All right. Who do we got here? Uh, Tank versus Pitbull rematch. Do you think it will happen? Do you, do you want to see it? There's a path to it, but I don't really care for it. When the better fights, I, I agree. I It's not my number one fight I want to see for Tank. It's not the number one fight I want to see for Pitbull. But it makes business sense for PVC. So therefore, I think it's a very strong possibility. And what they'll do is they'll say this fight is for a world title of 140 pounds. They'll say this is a rematch. They'll say the last fight was close because Javante hurt his hand. Pitbull took Javante to the distance. Not many fighters can do that. There are a lot of narratives. There are a lot of selling points for a Pitbull Javante rematch in December. The only reason I would like that fight to happen is because Tank could win, comes a champion at 140, and then maybe he looks at, at Javanta. I'm excuse me, maybe he looks at Tiafimo. Maybe he looks at Haney. Maybe there's more pressure to make those fights. Maybe the, the talk becomes so loud that Javanta can't avoid that. His team has to make those fights. If it leads to that, then I'm okay with Pitbull versus Javanta. He also has to beat Pitbull. Pitbull looked pretty freaking good against Roly Romero. I know it's Roly Romero, but Pitbull is not an easy out. Why didn't Zerto try to fight better Bia before going up to Cruiser? I don't know. He, he fought Bivol and then realized, I'm not that good. Heard someone say that a good track for Spence is Fundora at 154, Janabek at 160, and Canelo at 168. Doubt that happens yet. Yeah. Dude, Spence is not in it for that long. Like these guys, these a lot of these PBC guys that are like in Spence's age bracket, 
they're looking at one more fight. Like Danny Garcia looking for one more fight. Keith Thurman looking for one more paycheck. Spence, I would love to see him do that. Like that would be an awesome path for Spence. Like, you know, take take a fight with Fondora, fight Janabek, fight Canelo. I don't know where Spence's motivations are at this point in his life, this point in his career. He's made a lot of money. He's been through a lot of trauma. Um, I'm a little skeptical on how long Spence will stay in boxing and uh, his motivations. Is it right for the WBC to threaten not to sanction better BF Bevo to fight and throw the MSP to fight in Dripley? Dude, I don't know if that's even the case anymore. They were like WBC and Suleiman were like touting the, the war in the Ukraine as a reason not to, they're not going to sanction any Russians, which is might be the dumbest thing I've ever heard from the WBC. And they've done a lot of dumb things. Uh, Suleiman wants to put six judges in for Fury Usyk. And I still think him not sanctioning Russian fighters is dumber than that. Um, I think Saudis and all that has gone away. I think they made that go away. And the fights in Saudi Arabia, it's, it doesn't matter if it's for all four belts. It's very clear that better be having people are the best at 175. So who cares if all four belts are on the line anyway? Because the minute an undisputed fight is over, they all get stripped anyway. And WBC is dumb. Okay. There's my thoughts for the day. Pitbull versus Matias is a barn burner. Yeah, it is. Mexico versus Puerto Rico, both aggressive fighters. Neither is the same after that fight, though. Yeah, bro. Matias, let's talk about 140. That was supposed to be the basis of this live stream. I guess we'll talk about it more with Chris Algeria on next week's show. One four, I'm not really sold on Subrio Matias. Like, I obviously think Super Matias is really good. But I think he has so many holes defensively. I think he, he's so easy to get hit. I think he's kind of one-dimensional. I tweeted yesterday that I think Matias is the, is the weakest of all the champions at 140. Got a lot of blowback on it. Everyone looks at him as the boogeyman, right? He's done a really good job, his team, of you know building him up and hyping him up into this boogeyman that can't be touched, that can't be beat, has this like aura of invincibility. But dude, the guy's already lost once. And also, like every fight he's in, the first three or four rounds, he's getting tagged. And he eventually just outwills the, his opponent. All right, is he going to do that to Devin Haney? Is he going to be able to hit Devin Haney? Is he going to be able to hit uh, Tia Fimo? Pitbull, yeah. I mean, Pitbull's going to stand right in front of him, and they're going to brawl. But like against a, a slick boxer, I don't see Matias beating any of these guys. I, I think he's good, Matias, for sure. But he's not this invincible type of fighter that everyone says he is. Yes, I agree. He can absorb punches, for sure. But not everyone can. It's only a matter of time before you absorb too many shots and you get knocked out. There's not a way to, to sustain excellence in boxing by just taking punishment. This is something Algeria has said, and I really agree with them. Like Everyone is like, Matias is the best of them all. Matias is the best of them all. Yeah, because he's scary. He's got knockout power. He just barely talks. So you don't really hear from him. Um, he's made a lot of guys quit on their stool. I understand that. He's very, very good. But I think he's one-dimensional. I think he's very, very beatable. Matias is tailor-made for Tia Fimo. Agreed. Why is Top Rank not pushing hard for that fight? Tio's current opponent is high risk, virtually no reward. No, Tia Fimo's next opponent is not high risk. Steve Claget, he's going to freaking steamroll him. It's no reward for sure. It's low, it's low risk, no reward, which is which is a very, very bad situation to be in in boxing. Matias Tiafimo was the one I thought was the fight. That was the one I was like, do that on, on um, Puerto Rican Day weekend at, at, at MSG, the theater, wherever. Tiafimo Matias is an awesome fight. And now Matias signed with Matchroom, and we're kind of far away from that because, you know, good for Matias for getting that money. But being tough is not a compliment in boxing. I agree. I agree. That's my thing with Matias. He's a little too tough for my liking. Likes to stand and trade, take punishment. You're going to do that against some of the bigger punchers. Not only that, are you going to be able to outbox Devin Haney? You're going to be able to outbox Tiafimo? I don't think so. Still think he's damn good. Love to watch. I'll, he's must-watch boxing, in my opinion. He's must-watch TV, Matias. Just don't think he's that great. I saw someone make an analogy that Matias will have the same trajectory of Joe Joyce. He'll be beaten once he fights a genuine puncher that can tag him and not play along with his inside game. Agree. I know it's a little rough, it's a little harsh. When you think of Joe Joyce, you think of a slow. Matias is better than Joe Joyce, but I know what you're saying. Like in terms of 
uh, everyone was looking at Joe Joyce as, as this destroyer. Um, he's going to walk through all the top guys at heavyweight, just like everyone thinks Matias is going to walk through all the guys at 140. But the minute they put Joyce in there with Zhang, someone that can punch, it was all over for Joyce. Someone that can punch along with him. I'm not saying Haney can do that. I'm not saying T Fimo can. T Fimo's got power, but they have boxing skills and they'll be able to circle around. They'll be able to dance around um, Matias and beat them, guys. Matias' major problem is his footwork when closing distance. Any decent counter puncher with power could. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, do you think Richardson Hitchens makes an impact at 140? He's fighting this weekend, right? I don't know. I don't know. He's got. He's got a. It's a tough. I think he's really good, Hitchens. I think he's. He kind of like doesn't really have a lot of sizzle. Like he, he's a great technical boxer. And unfortunately, today, like that's not going to sell. Um, he can beat pretty much anyone with his style, but it's not going to be fun to watch. Um, he also doesn't have any profile at all. He's kind of buried at 140. Uh, Matchroom has their work cut out for them with him. I see Claget as an Cambosos before the big one. I don't see that at all. Not high level, but game enough on a given night he could pull off the upset. No. You're giving Claggett a lot of credit. I'm not. Claggett, whatever his name is, I don't think he's going to do anything. Top five youngest fighters that are up next. I don't know, man. I got to research that. Um, uh, off the top of my head, um, Adam Azim uh, over in the UK. Abdullah Mason, Bruce Carrington, uh, Emiliano Vargas, and... Carmel Moton. There's a list for you. Boom. Right off the top of my head, Randy. Top rank couldn't guarantee a T.O. fight. That's the reason Matias didn't sign with them. I don't understand how you can't guarantee that. Like, what? Like, what are we doing with these guys? Like, why isn't T.F. should Every fight for these guys should be big from here on out. Like, T.F. over Steve Claggett is a, such a waste of time. Like, what are we doing? Like, wh wh why? Why are we even sanctioning that? Why are we even entertaining that? I have no issues with people thinking Matias loses to Haney, Tio, etc. But I can't accept the assumption they would just beat him without fighting him. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. Okay, Sam. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, Bivol. Okay. Just started watching your channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Marlon Thornell. We have a lot of great stuff coming your way. We're going to be um, at Haney Garcia all week long with content. We're going to be at Canelo Munguia all week long with content part of ppv.com that's the team i'm with now i'm with ppv.com from here on out me and chris algeri do our podcast two times a week we had one out on monday that was one of our most watched podcasts ever uh that was breaking down zoo versus fundora and all the aftermath there we'll have another podcast out tomorrow twice a week i do this live chat every wednesday and then i'll give you a ton of content during the week and on fight weeks so thank you marlon mitch from work my guy Mitch, this is this guy Mitch right here, amazing editor, was with me in Las Vegas last weekend. We must have put out 20 different videos, short form, long form, everything. This guy Mitch is a star. Um, Bam versus anyway would be most must see. Yeah. Uh, Bam, I think they're building up to that. Maybe, maybe not, because Inouye and Bam are kind of friends. They have the same promoter. Uh, Bam is on his own trajectory in a way he's doing his thing at once they might miss each other in terms of weight i think bam versus um nakatani or nakatani versus in a way but they're kind of all around the same weight and bam is still growing but he's a really small guy um that's what we could see all right everybody i hope you enjoyed today's live stream i certainly did uh, it's all been brought to you by our friends at ppv.com, which is the premier home to order fights. Order Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. You know you're going to order it. You know you're going to want to watch that. So do it with ppv.com. No subscriptions. Join us in the live chat. Me, Chris Algieri, Jim Lampley, and all of that. Um, one last thing. It's not a dig at you, Dan. Just saying the pressure should be on the fighters to prove who they can beat in the ring. Yeah, I agree, Sam. Love you, too. Um, I'm, I get tired of talking hypotheticals, too. I would much rather break down a fight like a Matias versus Haney when we know we're going to get it, break it down, and then talk about it afterwards rather than talk about the hypotheticals. Believe me, friend. Great stream, Dan. Thank you, JW. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, people forget about Nakatani. All right, everyone. New episode of Inside Boxing Live drops on Friday. Hope everyone has a great week. 
go back to work, go back to doing whatever you're doing today. J JC, I see you, my friend. I'll talk to you soon, everybody. Good night.